My name is Samuel Langria and I come from Maasai community in northern Tanzania. I am a human rights defender and uh, an activist. Our communities are suffering from major issues, but the biggest one is land. And when you talk about land for indigenous people, you are talking about three things. Land, culture and livelihood. My name is Askola from a Maasai community on the border of Kenya and Tanzania. A camera is not only a tool, but through a camera, I can see light ahead. Because through the camera, we have been speaking the unheard voices. We have been speaking our problems through the camera, and also it can take the real message that is in the community. Our culture has been, is living, and that is true. And uh, we can only show that when we come together as an uh, indigenous community. Uh, we're here in Africa, in uh, Boschendal, organizing a video for change gathering for mainly indigenous peoples from across Africa. I think this is a very core message that we need for other people to see the potentiality of using video for change as an approach to communicate to defend, to build internal solidarity, to build capacity of people to be able to use the technology. The participants were really clear when we asked them what their expectations and needs are. They came here to connect with one another. They came here to learn and to bring back new skills back to their communities, particularly uh, around video for change techniques and methodologies and approaches, ways to use video to uh, defend their territories and um, pr preserve and protect their cultures and to amplify their voices. My name is Francis Chomet and uh, I like to work with indigenous people. My name is Gasparo. I teach people how to find themselves in the wilderness when they lost here. My name is Ivan Falboy. I'm originally from the Northern Cape, Kalahari, and uh, currently I'm working with indigenous people and indigenous people's rights. I am the Ngobi Mama, and I'm a documentary filmmaker. I'm a heritage activist, and I love people, and I'm a student in history. He takes it and it's still like in shock. You're right. Yeah. Trying to. Yeah. During this time, during these workshops, I was hoping that I can talk about the link of spirituality to land. I think this is one of the pleasant experiences I have is to meet new people from the African continent and I think it's very important that we uh, build bridges between us to uh, exchange experiences and learning points. So I am looking forward to go back to Libya with this network of new people. I have something to take to my community and I have something burning in my heart telling me that this is the way to go because we are not just using video to capture pictures. We are not just using video to capture moments. We are actually decolonizing the mainstream way of how people has taken a look uh, from the music industry to the actually the whole entire entertainment industry where people use video for all the wrong purposes. The topic of my short presentation today will be uh, about the video for change impact toolkit. If you're using video for advocacy, how do you obtain impact from that video and how do you go about strategizing for that impact? In many occasions, people think of filming. They don't have time to plan for filming. This is experience I've had uh, working with communities. And when you don't have time to plan, you never think about the audience, you never think about the impact, you never think about how the film will be you know, received. And there's all these other players in the field. There's governments, there's other parties, there's vested interests, there's power imbalances, there's corporate greed, there's all these things. So how does your video play around? And for me, as a practitioner, but also a human rights defender, I think this is really um, something to impact on our trainings for people to make sure that that is 
probably inserted in their thinking around making effective video for change. There is a common feeling that it's time for us to collaborate. We all have different skill sets, uh, different capacities that we can bring to the table. And I really hope that we can develop some partnerships moving forward so that um, we can really empower indigenous peoples in Africa at this crucial time to have a voice and amplify their particular perspective, their way of seeing the world and being in the world.